welcome back everyone to the hello one guy and this is the, the start of our new series in which uh, you already should have know uh, you should know because of the title and uh, thumbnail but well in this series we are going to uh, take an overview at c sharp programming for well this is mainly for uh, i have written c++ developers but it can be for anyone who has uh, you know uh, experience with uh, object oriented programming so if you know c++ or java or something else uh, then and you want like javascript even and you want to learn c sharp then um, then this course is for you so uh, it's not going to be something too advanced we are going to just discuss the basics in this one so if you want some additional features i can make a tutorial on that as well and we are going to do this uh, you know from the complete beginning installing and everything and in here uh, I have opened up the Visual, Stu uh, Visual Studio official website here and uh, um, I will leave a link to this in the you know actual description of this video and here you can see that we have got an option for downloading Visual Studio 2022 and we have also got an option for downloading for Mac if you want to do this but I am on Windows so to, in order to install that you can just click on this free download button and that should uh, work. Now once you have completed everything this Visual Studio installer should pop up and you should just go under available and select the community edition I have already installed that so I won't do it and once you do that this kind of screen should appear which should allow you to select the component or, uh, which you need and you can choose python as you were everything uh, is here but uh, the one we need for feature development is this .NET desktop environment and uh, you might also want game development with Unity if you are looking for that. I've got really good tutorials on Unity if you want to use them. And anyways, you can just select .NET Desktop Development for normal apps. And once you do that, just click on Install, and that should work. So uh, yeah, once you have installed everything, you can just open up the Visual Studio application. And uh, here you can see you should have all of your projects that you have used in here. Uh, I've currently collapsed them. And what you can do is you can select this Create a New Project option. Now in here uh, by default it should be like this and here you should see you can see that there's a lot of stuff and if I go under here and I select C sharp as my language and then for the project type I choose console. Now you can see that this uh, gives us only one uh, option uh, this is a template for creating the project which is a console app with the .NET framework. Uh, now you might have the .NET Core if you are on Mac or uh, well only Mac because Visual Studio does not work on Linux for that you will have to search a little bit on your own. Uh, uh, if you want to make um, me to make a tutorial on setting a C sharp on Linux then I will do that but um, well uh, uh, I'm only making a tutorial for Mac and Windows right now. So once you have selected this just go next and choose the latest version here make sure that you've got the latest version selected and there are modern versions of C sharp that have kind of different features than older ones but we are only going to use the legacy one right now because um, for compatibility because uh, I don't think Unity supports C sharp 9 right now so we are going to just use uh, the version I'm using for C sharp is 7.3 and the .NET framework is 4.8. Uh, and once you have done that you can just select your project name here and your location here and uh, you can just choose whatever you want for the name I might say something like uh, choose something like uh, C sharp okay you can't uh, say that just going to say my project project once you do that just hit the create button and that should start creating your project Alright, so once the project is created, this file should uh, pop up and this solution explorer, I have uh, added it here. If it's something uh, like this, you, you can, you know, dock it to the site if you want. And by default, it might be just like, uh, you know, just like uh, actually this. Uh, it might be like this, it is going to be uncollapsible, uh, but you can also, you know, make it collapsible if you want to, or you can just leave it like that. Uh, but uh, well, it's up to you, you can customize everything here, the windows, everything, this is the errors and error stuff, output and error list stuff. You can you can uh, change the window size, everything uh, as you want and you can also take the solution explorer and you can right click and hit dock. Uh, and that should do this and you can see dock as tab, okay, no, 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 uh, not say uh, that, uh, let me just get it there, right click and then you're going to hit dock and no, not just uh, dock. All right, that should put this here and when, what you can do is you can right click on this and hit auto hide and that should do it this way. You can click this button whenever you want to bring it up. And in here you can see we've got a bunch of files here, property stuff. And the main one is our program.cs file that we have got open here. Now uh, C sharp files and in CS naturally. And this is uh, our file. 
Now, if you are a C++ or Java programmer, if you are a C++ programmer, then this most of this should be pretty much uh, fine for you. Uh, and you can see we have got a namespace here. Namespaces that in C sharp are used for organizing code, so that um, you know uh, you can if there is a, a conflicting class name, then it doesn't cause any problem. And uh, there are uh, many free build libraries that you can use in C sharp. Now this namespace is optional. I can just remove this uh, if I want to, and that should just work as well. But uh, but, uh, but it's a good idea to have that. And uh, in here you can see we've got a class which has got the internal modifier on it. Now this is not required. You can remove that if you want. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that you should. Uh, have internal here if you are not using it out of the namespace. Uh, you don't need to get yourself to uh, uh, you know uh, mess up with that. Now, uh, if you have got any experience in object oriented programming, you should use that what a class is. A class is basically like a blueprint for objects uh, or variables that you can create. So uh, this is just an internal class program. All right, so uh, this class is the main class of our program. And in here, we have got, now if you use Java, you should be pretty familiar with this. In C, uh, if you use C++, you should know that in uh, C sharp versions prior to version nine, you need to have a class which has a main method in it uh, to in order for the program to run. Now in C sharp nine, you can use top level statements in which there is nothing of this. Uh, and you can just add in a statement here, but uh, that's not going to work because we are going to use uh, C sharp 7.3 right now, which comes with dot, .NET Framework 4.8. If you have got .NET Framework uh, uh, 5 or you know uh, above that, then you can use that. But we are going to just do the normal way here. Now uh, up here, I have shown you that this is these are the using tags. Now as I said, namespaces are used to organize stuff. So we have got a namespace here. Now, uh, now you don't always want to uh, prefix every uh, variable or every class or every object with the uh, or every method with the namespace name uh, because uh, you know you might want to use a namespace often. So you might not want to you know uh, add the name everywhere. Lot of boilerplate. Uh, but uh, uh, in order to fix that, what we can do is we can use this using statement. Now this is kind of like import in Java. And once you do you know, use this using statement, then you can use whatever namespace it's using uh, without actually, mm, uh, you know, uh, prefixing the name. So uh, you can see this is currently grayed out because none of these are actually being used. So you can remove them. Uh, but we are actually going to use this using system one, so you can keep that. Now uh, this is uh, you, if you can actually move it. If you, oh, uh, you can actually remove it if you want uh, by going here and saying remove necess uh, unnecessary using. And in here, you can see we've got uh, a main method. So in here, the main method is static. Now, what that means is that it, we do not need to spawn an instance of this class in order for the main method to run. Uh, it's just going to run even if we have not got an object of the class. This is required for the main method. Remember, the main method is the entry point of your program. So this is required uh, static and you need to, it to be avoid, of course. Uh, it's not like C++ in which you return an integer, you need to return a void. Uh, if you want to actually, you know, return an exit code, you can use a function. I will show you that later. In here, you can see we have got uh, arguments here. Now this is a uh, string array of arguments uh, called arg. Now this uh, string here, mm, this is uh, just a normal string value, mm, and uh, uh, this is a class in uh, this is a built-in C sharp class. So string is a primitive type in C sharp, and string is uh, uh, you know it's just a sequence of characters. And now in here we have got a string, and it's uh, mm, these brackets. These brackets are prefixed with the name of the type when you are making an array. So when you're making an array, you just add these uh, brackets, you know, square brackets after the uh, string, after the type name. Uh, you do not add it after uh, R uh, in, as in here because that's going to throw an error or, yeah, you can see that it throws an error. So you need to make it appear before the parameter name. Uh, you can do this actually, but that doesn't really make much sense. Now here we have got string array of args called, this is, these are the arguments of the C-sharp program. Uh, the at the command line argument. So you know when uh, you are running through the command line, these will appear. Now uh, I could run my program at this point right now, but uh, depend because I have got Visual Studio set up in a way that uh, it uh, you know automatically closes when the debug is installed. So if I just hit start, it automatically it just closes and uh, it opens and closes. So we do not want that. We want it to have a little bit of delay before it closes. Now you can go ahead in the Visual setting in Visual Studio settings and do that. 
but what I, what I am actually going to do is uh, I like to keep it disabled and instead use a practical method that will work in the actual application because this if you enable it in the options then it will only work inside of Visual Studio. So if I go here and I say system, now system is the namespace. So I am accessing a namespace and then I am hitting dot after it to access a class function or whatever inside of it. Now if I go inside of this and I say console then you can see this is a class now uh, I, I do not need to create a I can actually say console is equal to new system dot console but uh, uh, you can see that it does not work because it says uh, it's a static class so uh, because it's this class is only made for calling static methods so you cannot create an object of this type so if I go under system dot console dot this is calling a static method on a class which is a method of the class not of an object and I can use a method here called read key now what this does is that it just well, reads a key from the keyboard. Whenever your user presses a key, then it will return the key that was pressed. You can, you know, uh, click this. Uh, uh, yeah, this one. All right. So you can see that we have got a console key info variable here. You can do that, uh, but don't get to too much complications. We only want it to detect what key was pressed, and then you can see that it. Uh, oh. Uh, if I open this, you can see that this is kind of here and it's just empty and once I press a key, it closes. Because we are waiting for the key to press before we uh, actually close our window now. Now, uh, in here, you could prefix everything with system, but uh, there might be a better way to just remove this and instead say, uh, instead go up here and say using system. Once you do that, so uh, you can now call sy use system methods without actually Mm, uh, you know, uh, need to prefix it, uh, telling it explicitly. It's not a bad practice because uh, it doesn't, you know, like in C sharp, if you this there's no concept like headers and stuff, so you can use uh, using and you should use uh, using statements. It doesn't really uh, cause any problems, unlike in C plus plus, which usually considered kind of a bad practice. But uh, uh, in C sharp, it's totally fine. Now in here, I'm going to add in another function here, console dot write line. Now what this does is that it try uh, and I, if I just uh, you can use these codes to create a uh, a variable and if you are a Python programmer then you should know that uh, you cannot use these codes because that's a single character uh, you cannot add like uh, or you can no you cannot add like multiple stuff in here because this is a character mm, so you need to have a string literal in here now once you do that you can put something here like hello world. And once you do that, if I hit play, but you can see that uh, it's not play, start, you can see that we have got hello world displayed in here and that works pretty fine. Now, uh, uh, in this uh, video, my purpose was to get everything set up and show you some of the basics. Uh, but I'm also going to show you a really cool thing. What you can do here is you can see console, uh, console dot, uh, and you can go uh, foreground color. Now, this is a property. I will explain properties in C sharp later. But you can say something like foreground color is equal to console color dot green. Now if you do that, what you should see is that we get a green hello world. You can change this to red, and that means that we get a red hello world. And but uh, you can also change the background color if you want to something like uh, so white, uh, or you can uh, you can also see that we have got nice intelligence here as well. Console dot background color is equal to color dot uh, white something like that. And you can see that now we get a red uh, text on white background. Mm, you can just set it to something. Uh, you can you can play around with the colors, uh, which is something that's pretty hard to accomplish in C++. So yeah, you can mm, do this. So this is pretty much it for this video. I, I just in, you know, introduced you some basic concepts, and uh, we set up the Visual Studio project and wrote a small Hello World program that displays Hello World in red color. So uh, in the next video, we are hopefully going to get uh, into more of the language, explore some more features. So I'll stay tuned for that. Make sure to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video and bye.